the single most important thing that I like to get across to the students sounds so mundane and they hate to hear it, but it is that you have to work hard. There's no shortcuts. And the harder you work, the better you improve. What they want to hear and what I did too when I started is learn a couple of tricks and then all of a sudden you're, you're a great artist. It, you know, you don't want to hear, oh, it's going to take 10 years of working every day. You, you get back what you put into something. And the same with art as anything else. And if you're not willing to make the effort, you're not likely to get anything out. It's hours and years alone in your studio with just you and the canvas to become a painter. What people have commented on before is that what they like about my paintings is that they seem to come alive or pop out of the canvas in a kind of a unique way. You know, I, I think that's it's part of the method that I paint in, that, and the, you know, I'm quite thorough as a painter. I, I, I don't just do things and, oh, okay, that's good enough. Though it's tempting to say that. You know, it's like quicker, you know, oh, that's good enough, go on to the next one. But I spend a lot, you know, I spend a lot of time, a lot of layering, a lot of thinking, a lot of putting paint on, scraping it off. Uh, and I think that's what brings the painting to life. Painting figures is sort of like uh, the Holy Grail of painting. I mean, this is sort of the ultimate object is of everything. He comes back to, you know, human nature. I mean, the philosophers, it's always the proper study of man is man or know thyself and all this. You know, what makes a good model, you know, maybe someday I'll figure it out. You know, I certainly don't know the answer to that one. Quite often your models are people you know, you meet, you talk to them, and painting them is another, just another step. You know, you say, well, I want to paint you. Same as saying, well, I'd like to get to know you better, or I want to get to know you better, but I don't particularly want to talk to you while I do it. <laughs> I want to paint you. It's not a particular type, or some. I can't typify what 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 kind of model I'm interested in. Maybe if I figured that out, then I wouldn't need to paint them anymore. <laughs> Though that's kind of an easy answer. I think that's what people say when they don't. They're floundering and they don't know how to answer a question. I think the the surroundings that I find myself in help my painting quite a bit. The particular living on on Bowen Island. It's quite rural, very quiet. Kind of allows you the space to explore or to paint, without uh, being overwhelmed. Uh, you know, if you're in the city, you, 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 it's so easy to become, especially if you're young and in the city, be pretty easy to be overwhelmed by all the things going around you and kind of lose track of your own own uh, style or your own road. I'm glad that where I live, 
I can get in the city within a few hours. But when I come home, I can kind of close all that off. I do a lot of landscapes, and uh, what I guess makes them different is I, I never work from real life or even photos. I always make them up, even the clouds. You know, I can look out my window and see clouds, but I prefer my own. In a way, then they become almost always uh, self-portraits, you know. I mean, you're really painting yourself for what your vision of what reality should be is. I'll introduce elements that you wouldn't find in nature, you know, the sort of lines and sort of ghost images that, you know, obviously are more psychological items than realistic ones. If you could place my landscapes in a, in a timeline and geographically, I definitely I think it'd be Northern Europe, kind of Holland and North. And uh, time-wise, you know, I think uh, the early 1800s. I've been told that my landscapes um, have, you know, one element in common is kind of a calmness or serenity. There's a lot of formal elements in my landscape. You know, the, the horizon will be at a certain place. You know, the hills and trees, all, the, the placement of them is, I think, following some sort of inner rules of order. You know, when I do, I'll put a, a, a group of trees in a certain area and it won't look right. So I'll take them out and move them half an inch over to one side or when it looks right, it looks right. You know, I'm, I'm putting things in certain places for certain reasons. And those reasons seem to have to do with it, or the result of those reasons is always a sense of balance and harmony and order. But harmony, you know, you know, these things can be overdone. You know, you have to introduce disharmony in it as well. If you had too much harmony, it'd just be a boring canvas. So there's got to be a little dissonance in there as well. I'm compelled to follow this mantra if it's got to work. Even though I can't quite define what I mean by that. Why does something work and why does something not? But I think that's what makes art interesting. I mean, it was so easy to define, you know, probably no one would want to do it.